Intramolecular forces, or IMFs, are incredibly important in biomolecules. In this video, we're going to focus on intramolecular forces in lipid aggregates. Lipids, as a class of biomolecules, are defined a little bit differently than what we've talked about with proteins and sugars. They're not defined based on um, structure of monomers that make them up. Rather, they're defined by uh, characterization of their solubility behaviors. Uh, lipids, by nature, have a hydrophobic nature, which makes them more soluble in nonpolar solvents than in water. And because of this, there are a variety of chemical structures that lipids can take. So lipids, for example, can be classified as fatty acids, as triacylglycerols, as glycerol phospholipids, as sphingolipids, or as sterols. Because I'm going to talk about lipid aggregates, I'm only going to focus here on fatty acids and uh, glycerol phospholipids. So shown first here is the structure of a fatty acid. And what you can see is it's a carboxylic acid that has an R group attached to it. This R group is a long chain hydrocarbon. It can be saturated or unsaturated. And common biological fatty acids have these R groups between 12 and 24 carbons with zero to six double bonds. And those double bonds are almost always cis in orientation. So if we think about what a fatty acid looks like, it's got a polar head group and it's got a nonpolar tail. And so if we're gonna think about intermolecular interactions of fatty acids, this polar head group is going to interact with things like water by hydrogen bonding interactions or dipole-dipole interactions. And then this long nonpolar tail is going to want to be away from water, interacting with other nonpolar moieties. Another type of lipid that I want to talk about uh, for the aggregates that we're going to consider are glycerol phospholipids. These are shown on the bottom. These are derived from a glycerol backbone. And I can circle the glycerol backbone here. In this glycerol backbone, one of the oxygens uh, has been esterified, and this has an R1 group on it, which again is a long chain hydrocarbon. The second oxygen of glycerol has also been esterified. It has an R2 group on it, which is again a long chain hydrocarbon. And then the third oxygen of glycerol has been made into a phosphate ester, which is a really polar head group. So if we're going to look at uh, the structure of glycerol phospholipids, it has a polar head, and then it has two long nonpolar tails. R1 um, is often saturated between 16 carbons and 18 carbons. R2, which is the long chain over here, is often unsaturated and is 16 to 20 carbons. Um, in this X group, uh, can be a number of different things, and it, it's derived from, from a polar alcohol. So if we're going to look at glycerol phospholipids and think of non-covalent uh, intramolecular forces that, that, it's going to, uh, that they are going to participate in, again, we have two nonpolar hydrophobic tails that are going to want to be away from water, interacting with other things by uh, London dispersion forces, and we've got a, a polar head group that's going to want to be interacting uh, in an aqueous um, medium with water um, by hydrogen bonding. So we're going to look at three lipid aggregates, micelles, bilayers, and liposomes. Uh, let's look at micelles first. If we look at micelles, micelles are formed when um, a lipid that has a single tail is placed in uh, water. So for example, if you take a fatty acid that has a polar head group and one tail and you put it into an aqueous medium, what you're going to form is a micelle. Um, micelles are sphere spherical in nature. They have the polar head groups of each of the fatty acids facing the uh, aqueous solution so that they can interact with water, and they have all of their nonpolar tails 
facing away from water, facing each other, forming a hydrophobic core. And again, the intermolecular interactions in this hydrophobic core are induced dipole and de induced dipole interactions. So this is one type of liquid aggregate that can form, and it forms with lipids that have single tails. If you take a lipid that has two tails, like a glycerol phospholipid, and put it into water, what you're going to form is a bilayer. Um, and that bilayer is shown in this picture. Um, this is a bilayer sheet that's shown. And the way that this is oriented is that all of the hydrophilic or polar heads are facing water, either on this side of the bilayer or on the bottom side of the bilayer. And the hydrophobic tails are all facing interior. So those hydrophobic tails, again, are away from water. They're interacting with each other by induced dipole, induced dipole forces, which make this a really um, structurally sound um, configuration. And this, as you'll recognize, forms the structural basis for biological membranes. If you take a bilayer and you sonicate it, what you form is a liposome. And this is the structure of a liposome. A liposome is a closed, self-sealing, solvent-filled vesicle that can have a different internal and external environment. The way that it's set up is that, again, you have hydrophobic, uh, the hydrophobic tails facing inside, away from water. They're facing each other. So again, intermolecular forces in this part of the liposome are induced dipole, induced dipole forces. You have all of the polar heads either facing the aqueous medium outside or facing an aqueous medium inside where the intermolecular forces that stabilize this um, are polar uh, or hydrogen bonding in nature. Um, li lipid aggregates have been really valuable um, in biology studies of membranes. They've also been very valuable in terms of thinking about how we might form carrier molecules for particular biomolecules. So as we think about li lipid aggregates, there are, there are really two types of intermolecular forces that are going to be important. The head groups are polar. They want to interact with water through hydrogen bonding. The tail groups are nonpolar. They want to interact with each other away from water by induced dipole, induced dipole interactions.